Remember guys, don't try any of what you're about to see without the proper training or supervision. Hi guys, welcome to the Sports Lab with Science Junkies, Greg and Hill. Woohoo! We're here to give you an insight into our world and uncover all the science and tech that makes these sports so awesome. Today we're at Avan Forest, the mountain biking mecca. This is the place to get your adrenaline pumping as you burn it down these rocky single tracks. Or chill out along the forest's wider stunning fire tracks. We're going to come something like 15 kilometers today. But our favorite bits are the extreme descents. But unfortunately, you can't have those without the climbs. Today we'll be climbing something like 400 meters which is Ooh. the same as climbing up a 90-storey building without a lift. If we run up this, we'd be exhausted. Yep. But because bikes are such efficient machines, they make it a lot easier for us. And the gears are the genius bit. If you didn't have gears, going up here would be a massive mission. It'd be really, really difficult to get up this hill. Every one rotation of the pedals moves the back tyre once. You'd only move about 80 centimetres. Going uphill, though, to turn the bike 80 centimetres takes a lot of effort and your legs will get really shattered. If you're clever though, and you stick it into the small gear at the front, the granny gear, it's much easier to pedal. Now, probably three turns with the pedals still moves you that 80 centimetres. That's why you're stuck back there. Cheat! <laughs> when you're zooming downhill, you're covering a lot of ground fast. You could just freewheel it, but it's really good to make pulses with the pedals as you go around corners. So shift up. So your chain is on a big cog at the front, a small cog at the back. Oh, that's a high gear. I'll tell you what, dude, after all those hills, these muscles are burning. Yeah, man, my quads and hamstrings are both really worn out. It's good, though. <laughs> it is. When you're biking, you need to keep eating to keep your power up. In this sandwich, the carbohydrates are broken down into the glucose, which fuels my muscles. Yeah, and when you're biking, your breathing rate increases, so you start to get more and more oxygen into your body. And that works with the glucose to give you energy. That's called aerobic respiration, and your body can go on producing energy like that for a long time. But if there isn't enough oxygen, your body needs to do something else to get the energy, and that's called anaerobic respiration. Yeah, and that produces energy without the oxygen. But the downside is the lactic acid it creates. And that's what you feel in your muscles when they burn. Right, let's get more of it. Why let's not? hit the downhills. This is Andre. He bikes for Great Britain. And he's got a Guinness World Record. Not bad, eh? So Andre, what is it you love about biking? You can ride absolutely anywhere you want. That's the fantastic thing about it, whether it's in a town and you're doing urban like just kind of street trials riding or something, or you're out in the forest, it gets you out in the wilderness, keeps you fit, keeps yes. you healthy. What do you need to think about when you're biking? What do you need to keep in your mind? Control of the bike, you know, obviously, especially on downhill descent, and making sure that you know you're ready for whatever's ahead, like the next big climb and stuff like that. So if you were gonna offer any advice to youngsters trying to get into this kind of sport, what would that kind of be? Quite simple, get on your bike and yeah. ride it. That's in your bike. So having said that, should we, uh, should we make a move? Yeah. Fantastic! <laughs> This bike is taking a serious beating and I'm bouncing around all over the place. But how does me and it stay in one piece? The frame is made of aluminium, so it's really strong and lightweight, which means they can take a lot of force before they break. My tyres are the first line of defence. They're full of air, so cushion me against the bumps. The tyres are also wicked in the mud. They're fast, so they spread out your weight and you don't sink in like you would on a road bike. Plus, the big chunky tread gives you lots of friction, allowing you to power through the forest. The key, though, is the bike's shock absorbers. They're made of two parts, the dampener and the spring. The spring compresses when the bike hits a rock and then springs the tyre back out to keep it in contact with the ground so you've got maximum control. 
and then the dampener disperses all the energy and stops the suspension bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Man, what an ace day, it's been amazing. You know it's been a good day when you're covered in mud. So there it is, the science and tech of mountain biking. Your bike is an awesome piece of kit. And if you fancy a great day, just grab a bike and head out to the forest. Go explore the science of your favourite sports and come join the Science Junkies next time on the Sports Lab. <laughs> <laughs>